Have you ever wondered what makes your cake so light and fluffy? Well, the secret isn't just in your baking skills. It's a simple white powder sitting in most of our kitchens, baking soda. But here's the thing, baking soda does way more than just fluff up your baked goods. Today on Products Uncovered, we're uncovering various shocking facts about baking soda, how it's made, where it comes from, and why it's a must have in every home. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll never look at that little box the same way again. Before we get started, hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-blowing content. Let's jump in. I know what you're thinking. Baking soda is just baking soda, right? Well, not precisely. Actually, there are primarily two methods of making it. The first approach is carried out in factories by scientists using unique multi-step procedure, including common household chemicals. The second approach, less popular but still fairly cool, involves mining baking soda directly from the earth. The same essential elements are used in both techniques. You require calcium carbonate, which is derived from limestone, and sodium, which is found in table salt. In addition, carbon dioxide is needed for the fizzy reaction, and water is needed to help mix everything together. The Solve technique is used to make the majority of baking soda that is sold in stores. Don't worry, I'll break it down for you. It's not as complicated as it sounds. The Solve Process The Solve process is also referred to as the ammonia soda process. Basically, it's turning common elements like limestone and table salt into a new substance called soda ash, or sodium carbonate. Soda ash is an essential component of baking soda. Fun fact, the Solve technique is used to create almost 75% of the soda ash produced worldwide. The remainder? as we'll see a bit later, is literally mined out of the earth. So, how does this whole process work? Let me walk you through it. Step 1. Making brine They start by creating a brine, which is a salt water solution. First, hot purified water is used to ensure that it is extremely pure and devoid of any impurities. After that, they add industrial grade salt to the water, which is essentially a lot of table salt. The tricky part is that they have to mix it continuously to ensure that everything melts precisely. To make sure the brine, or salty solution, is ready for the next step in the baking soda process, it is carefully cooled to the ideal temperature. Although this step seems straightforward, it's very important. The brine can be brought to the right temperatures for the impending chemical reactions by cooling it. Similar to how we prepare ingredients for baking, ensuring that everything is at the proper temperature contributes to the flawless outcome of the finished result. Thus, everything is ready for the next major step in turning regular salt and water into baking soda after the brine has cooled. Step 2. Creating Soda Ash Let's move on to soda ash. Recall the limestone we discussed before? Earth is mined for that rock, which is then crushed to the ideal size for the reaction. Then, in these enormous chambers, known as Solve Towers, the crushed limestone is combined with the brine solution previously prepared. These towers resemble extremely sophisticated, advanced pressure cookers. It becomes fairly warm when they turn up the heat to about 850 degrees Celsius, or over 1500 degrees Fahrenheit for my pals who use Fahrenheit. A chemical reaction occurs after everything is combined and the heat is applied intensely. First, this reaction yields sodium carbonate, sometimes known as soda ash, which we all enjoy. Second, although it's really a byproduct, is calcium chloride. However, calcium chloride should not be undervalued. It can be quite helpful for things like winter road de-icing and dust control on dirt roads. Therefore, nothing is wasted here. Step 3. Cleaning up After the reaction, they are left with the remaining calcium chloride particles and a combination of sodium carbonate dissolved in water. Sifting flour to get rid of clumps is similar to the next step, which is filtering everything out. Eliminating the solid calcium chloride bits will yield a clean, well-kept soda ash solution. The quality is closely monitored the entire time to ensure that everything works out well. Moving on to the exciting part, converting the clean soda ash solution into baking soda. Step 4. Making baking soda. We are now approaching the final product. That sodium carbonate solution is combined with more brine and ammonia gas to create baking soda. Ammonium chloride and sodium bicarbonate, or baking soda, are the two new compounds that result from this mixture. 
In this reaction, carbon dioxide also plays a role in converting the sodium carbonate into baking soda particles that solidify and ultimately sink to the bottom of the tank. Once the liquid is extracted from these solid particles, baking soda is produced. We're not quite done though. Step 5. Evaporation and Crystallization Our sodium bicarbonate is now ready, but it still includes some water and other ingredients that we don't want in the finished product. The fluid is warmed gradually using a procedure known as evaporation. By doing this, the water is driven off, and this facilitates the formation of the familiar tiny crystals made of baking soda. Since sodium bicarbonate doesn't dissolve well at cold temperatures, crystals begin to form as the solution cools. Once these stunning crystals have formed, they are removed from the residual liquid. There's more though. Step 6. Drying and Sizing the Crystals To get rid of any remaining moisture, the crystals must be thoroughly dry. This makes sure the baking soda is nice and dry, which is necessary for it to be easy to use and flow properly. Vacuum chambers are often used in factories for drying because they evaporate water quickly without the need for extremely high heat, which could harm the crystals. After drying, the crystals are arranged in size order. To ensure homogeneity, the crystals are separated by weight using air blasts or passed via screens. Lighter crystals are pushed aside and heavier crystals remain in place. This helps ensure that all the baking soda is just the right size for our baking and cleaning needs. Step 7. Packaging The crystals can now be packaged because they are all uniformly sized in a dry. Machines are utilized here to accurately measure and fill plastic bags, cardboard boxes, and other containers with baking soda. The container is crucial because it maintains baking soda's freshness and readiness for use. Baking soda may come in varied packaging, depending on its intended application. It normally comes in a box, for instance, if it's intended for baking. If it's meant for industrial usage, a bigger bag or container might be included. And that's a wrap on how baking powder is made. Oh my days, don't leave yet! Let's talk about the last, but not the least method, mining baking soda. Alright, so as I said before, not all baking soda comes from a factory. It is truly dug from the earth to some extent. Even if it's less common, it's incredibly fascinating. There are significant subterranean deposits of trona in locations like Wyoming in the United States. Trona is mined and processed to produce soda ash, which is similar to the Solvay method and that it may be used to generate baking soda. Trona mining is an extremely simple operation. The mineral must be accessed by excavating a large hole in the subsurface, bringing it to the surface, and then processing it to remove the soda ash. Since it involves fewer chemical reactions than the Solvay process, this approach is considered more environmentally friendly. And there you have it, the fascinating journey behind the creation of baking soda. Far more complex than just grabbing a box off the shelf. This everyday essential is either mined from deep within the earth or carefully crafted in factories using the intricate Solvay process. Understanding its origins really makes us appreciate how much goes into producing something we often take for granted. But baking soda's story doesn't end there. Beyond making our cakes rise to perfection, it serves as a versatile household staple doubling as a personal care product, a powerful cleaner, and even an industrial powerhouse. Who knew such a simple item had such an extraordinary backstory? If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of baking soda, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more intriguing and educational content. The next time you pull out that box from your pantry, you'll have a whole new appreciation for the science and effort that brought it to your home.